Welcome! In this video I will show you how to use linear optimization to find an optimum solution for an allocation problem. Our example today is focusing on a forest management decision problem. We do have a 10 hectare 40 year old spruce stand that is due for thinning this year. Regarding the thinning type we have two choices. First we can carry out thinning from below also known as low thinning, as trees are removed primarily from the lower canopy, for example suppressed and subdominant trees, and from among the smaller diameter trees. An example is shown in this picture here on the right. The aim of low thinning is to concentrate potential for growth on the larger diameter trees by removing competing smaller trees. Secondly, we can carry out thinning from above, also known as crown thinning. An example can be seen in this picture here. And this thinning type allows selected dominance to grow rapidly by gradually removing competing trees. The two thinning types are our activities. Our goal is to maximize total revenues that arise from summing up revenues from thinning this year, as well as revenues from our final harvest in year 20. However, we only have a limited budget of 11,500 Canadian dollars available to carry out our activities this year. Additionally, Depending on the activity type chosen, we anticipate damages to the stand until it reaches the year of final harvest, and in the case of thinning from above, we assume that damages will be higher than in the case of thinning from below. If we carry out thinning from above, we calculate losses of 10% of our maximum harvest value. If we carry out thinning from below, we calculate losses of 5% of our maximum harvest value. In total, the forest owner is willing to accept a maximum of 13,000 Canadian dollars in losses. Keep in mind that we plan to bring our decision problem into mathematical form. What could be the objective function? And what are our restrictions? So let's have a look at the working steps again that are necessary to find a graphical solution using linear optimization. First of all, we have to describe the decision problem. Then we will be defining coefficients and variables to finally bring our problem into mathematical form. In step D, we can then start finding a graphical solution. And later on, we will learn how to find a computer-based solution using the Excel solver. The first step, describing the decision problem, is a summary of our decision problem and usually contains all the information available and necessary to find an optimum solution. In our second step, we have to define our coefficients and variables, a step that is necessary to come to a mathematical problem formulation. Generally, a variable is a symbol that we assign to an unknown value that can change, and it is usually represented by letters. The coefficient of a variable is the number that is placed in front of a variable. So using the description of our problem that we've had a look at before, we will now have to assign a coefficient or variable to every information that we found in the text. We know that the forest owner's goal is to maximize her economic value of the forest or her returns in year 20. So first of all, we assign the letter Z to the sum of returns from today's thinning and the returns from final harvest in 20 years from now. Secondly, we said that our type of thinnings are our activities. We have two activities, thinning from below and thinning from above. So we assign the letter I to type of thinning and I can take two values, one indicating thinning from below and two indicating thinning from above. We are dealing with two points in time, t equals zero and t equals 20 in 20 years from now. So we assign t to time and t can have two values, zero or 20. In total, we have 10 hectares available to carry our thinning types out on. We assign the letter a to area and we index it with a small i so if we later in our mathematical problem formulation, we see A index one, this is the area assigned to thinning from below. And if we see A index two, this is the area assigned to thinning from above. 
we need to assign a letter to revenues. And we have revenues from thinnings that will arise this year. And we have revenues from final harvest that will arise in year 20. And additionally, we do get revenues from both thinning types that we carry out. So we need R index I at point in time zero and R index I point in time 20 to define all the four options. Let us see, we assign to the costs associated with thinning activities. And once again, we do have an index I, so we can um, display costs related with our one thinning type and costs related with our second thinning type. And last but not least, we have the expected reduction of revenues, um, losses that we anticipate due to damages. And we assign the letter L to those losses, once again, indexed with the small i. Now that we've defined our variables and coefficients, we can bring our desire to maximize revenues from harvesting activities in year 20 as well as thinning activities this year into a mathematical form. You can see the objective function in the blue box on the top of this slide. And what you see here could basically also be written as A index 1 multiplied with r index 1 t equals 0, which would be the revenues that we get from the area that we carry thinning type 1 out on, multiplied with the revenue that we get from thinning type 1 in year 0, plus a index 1 multiplied with r index 1 t equals 20, which would be the revenue that we get from multiplying the area that we did carry out thinning type 1 on with the revenue that we get for harvesting that area in 20 years from now, plus A index 2 multiplied with R index 2 T equals 0, plus A index 2 multiplied with R index 2 T equals 20, which would be the equivalent for the area that we carry out thinning type 2 on. After bringing our objective function into mathematical form, let's have a look at the restrictions that apply to our decision problem. First of all, we do have a maximum area available that we can carry our activities out on. This maximum area is 10 hectares in our case, and in the mathematical form, we could write it as the sum of all areas has to be smaller or equal than 10 hectares. Our second restriction is related to the maximum budget available to carry out thinning activities. Our maximum budget was $11,500. And um, basically what we have to do now is to make sure that the costs that arise for all activities will always be smaller or equal to $11,500. So what we do here is we multiply the area that we carry thinning type 1 out on with the costs that are related to the specific thinning type. And then we add the area that we carry out thinning type 2 on multiplied with the costs that arise for that specific management type. Our third restriction is related to the maximum acceptable risk. We said that our forest owner is willing to accept a total in losses of 13,000 Canadian dollars. So basically the way we write it is pretty much similar to the way we wrote the restrictions regarding the maximum budget. As you can see here, we multiply the losses of each thinning type with the area that we assign to each thinning type add the two together and make sure that it's always smaller or equal than the maximum allowance that we had regarding losses. With our last restriction, we basically formulate something that is self-evident. We ask for our decision variables never to be negative. So for example, one of our decision variables would be area size. And what we say is that area size can never be smaller than zero. So whenever we are talking about area, it has to be larger or equal to zero. Let's have a look at the specific costs and revenues related with the two management types. You do have this information available in your worksheet that contains the problem formulation and you should keep it handy for the following steps. 
So basically, the table is made up out of four segments. In the first segment, you can see information about thinning from below at point in time t equals zero. In the second segment, you can see information about thinning from above at the same point in time. And in the segments below that, you can see information about thinning from below at point in time t equals 20, or um, what the results will be after carrying out thinning from below in t0 in 20 years from now. And to the right of this information, you find the same information for the future of the stents that have been thinned from above. The calculations leading to the numbers are explained in my video on using the Excel solver for finding an optimum solution for this problem. And let's just assume that they are correct for now. We only have to deal with two decision variables in this example. First, the area that we carry out management type 1 on. And second, the area that we carry out management type 2 on. Accordingly, we can use a two-dimensional coordinate system to find a graphical solution. First, we define which variable to display on which axis. Let's display thinning from below on the x-axis and thinning from above on the y-axis. As one of our restrictions is non-negativity, we already know that our solution will be positive, so the coordinate system we draw has to cover the positive solution space only. Now, we basically define our solution space in the coordinate system based on straight lines that are, in turn, defined by our restrictions. Besides non-negativity, our first restriction is the maximum area size available. If we carry out thinning from below on the entire 10 hectares, we don't have any area available for the other thinning type. The same applies when we use the entire area carrying out thinning from above. These two findings can be transformed into points in our coordinate system. You can see that I've already prepared a little table displaying our three restrictions that we have to look at. Now, if we use the coordinates that we calculated, spending our entire area for one or the other thinning type, we get two points that lie directly on our two axes. One lies at 10 on the y-axis and the other one lies at 10 at the x-axis. If we now connect those two points on our axis, we get a solution space that already contains only such solutions that in combination would make up a maximum of 10 hectares. The second restriction that we have to take into account is our budget limitation. We have a total of 11,500 Canadian dollars available to carry out thinning activities in year zero. Both thinning activities come at a specific cost per hectare. We get that information from the table from your worksheet and you can see here that thinning from below costs us 1,200 Canadian dollars per hectare, whilst thinning from above costs 975 Canadian dollars per hectare. To find our points on the axis, we now divide the total available budget by the costs for each thinning type. In the case of thinning from below, we divide 11,500 by 1,200 and come to a point on the axis of 9.6. In the case of thinning from above, we divide 11,500 Canadian dollars by 975 Canadian dollars per hectare and come to a solution of 11.8 hectares that we can carry that thinning type out on if we spend our entire budget on that specific thinning type. We mark the points that we calculated on our axis in the coordinate system and connect the points to further limit our solution space. Our next restriction is related to the maximum losses that the forest owner is willing to accept regarding damages. We basically do the same that we did in our last step. We assume that we can spend the entire 13,000 Canadian dollars available for this specific restriction on one or the other thinning type. And once again, you can see in the table containing all the information, how much um, a 5% damage in the case of thinning from below or a 10% damage in the case of thinning from above would actually sum up to. So in a first step, 
we divide 13,000 Canadian dollars by 923 Canadian dollars in losses and come to a point on the x-axis of 14.1. In the second step, we divide the entire 13,000 Canadian dollars available by 1,776 Canadian dollars. And we come to a point on the y-axis at 7.32. So once again, we bring the points that we just calculated into our coordinate system. We connect the two points and do have a line that displays our risk restriction. Using our restrictions and the information available, we now have defined the area that will contain our optimum solution. It is displayed by the yellow area on this slide. As our lines display the maximum combinations possible under the given restrictions, we do not have to calculate the revenues related to every point within the solution space. It is sufficient if we calculate the revenues related to the vertices of our solution space. Let's have a look at those vertices. At the first point, we get the coordinates x equals 0 and y equals 0, leading to a total revenue of 0. At the second point, we do not carry out any thinning from below, but we do carry out thinning from above on 7.32 hectares. Accordingly, we have to multiply the related returns from thinning and final harvest with 7.32 to calculate our revenue that we can expect when using the specific combination of the two management types. Remember the two ways to write our objective function that we discussed earlier. Using the information available from our table, we can also write this as displayed here. Now we insert our values, in this case 0 and 7.32, and calculate a revenue of 146,653 Canadian dollars for this specific point in the solution space. Now we have to calculate the returns that would arise from the remaining three combinations of thinning type A and B and can finally conclude that the ideal mixture of thinning type A and B to maximize our returns would be to carry out thinning from below on 5.6 of the 10 hectares and thinning from above on 4.4 hectares. You are now able to use a graphical solution approach for a linear decision problem. Please have a look at my video on how to use the Excel Solver add-in for a linear optimization problem next.